Income tax 2023-2024. Taxable refunds, credits, or offset of state and local income taxes. Tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can recognize the quacks while doing income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Form 1040 tax software example using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting at our normal starting point with our taxpayer, Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man living in Beverly Hills 90210, starting off as a single filer, no dependents. We have W-2 income at the nice round 100,000. We have the standard deduction 13,850, giving us the taxable income 86,150. If we look at that in a formula format in Excel, we've got the 100,000 income. We've got the standard deduction 13,850, giving us the taxable income 86,150. And then the tax calculated by the software 14,266, represented in page two of our software there's the 14,266. Let's go back to page one. Now we're looking at income that is flowing through through the schedule one. Now remember, the, if you were to construct a tax return, for example, you probably constructed something like this, making a general outline formula and then having other schedules worksheets basically feeding into that formula. However, because of the way the tax returns have been structured, over the years, they wanted to try to fit everything on one page for a long period of time. And therefore, you have all of this stuff basically on the first page of the tax return related to income. But now that the tax returns are electronic, it makes sense that you have more of schedules to increase the complexity rather than trying to fit everything on one page of a tax return. And you can see that's what they did more and more starting a couple of years ago. They added some of these schedules. So now on line eight, I'm going to put a little check next to it. We have the additional income from schedule one, line 10. So let's take a look at schedule one then. If I go into schedule one, here we go. And then we have schedule one, part one, line number 10 is going to be adding all of this stuff up which will then feed into the first page of the form 1040, which will be our uh, income line item. We're focused on the first one here, which is going to be the taxable refunds, credit, or offset of state and local taxes. Okay, so the general rule for this one is that you, you will oftentimes get a 1099, I believe, G from the state. And that will be dependent upon the state that you're in and whether your state has an income tax system. If they have an income tax system that mirrors the federal income tax system, then it's likely that you're going to do the same kind of thing. You try to overshoot the payment of your taxes because you don't want to get hit with penalties and interest to stick from the state. And then in the following year, so if you overpaid your taxes in 2022, you're going to get a refund. And when you get a refund, you might get that 1099G that is telling us that there's a refund and also going from the state to the federal government to tell the federal government that you got a refund. And usually when there's a 1099, it has to be included in income. However, this one is a bit of an exception for many cases. And just to kind of recap why this might be the case, note if we imagine this is the income taxes for the federal income taxes. Note in page two, we, we, we have an amount due at this point in time. If I was to imagine that we overpaid the taxes, let's go back in here and say that we overpaid 
and we paid like 16,000 of withholdings, then of course we would have a refund, which we're trying to do to avoid that penalty. And so that's how we do it. We get a small refund. We're shooting for a small refund because I would rather have my money sooner rather than later having bigger paychecks rather than smaller paychecks. Now, this, of course, is a tax return for tax year 2023 that we are filing at some point in 2024. If I tell the government that we have overpaid and we want to get some of that money refunded to us, it's going to be refunded to us in 2024 for payments that were made in 2023. Now, if we get a check in 2024, we know the general rule is all money that we've received has to be included in income unless it says otherwise by the code uh, from the IRS. But in this case, it would, wouldn't really make sense for us to include this in income because this is simply an overpayment. This isn't actually income. We paid them too much in taxes for tax year 2023. So when I received this overpayment in 2024, it wouldn't make sense for me to include it in income. However, when we look at the state taxes, we have a similar situation on the state tax return. So for example, I live in California that has a state income tax system and it kind of mirrors the federal income tax system. If I overpay on the state and I have a refund from the state, then of course, I wouldn't include that refund on the state tax return as income. However, I might have to include it on the federal income tax return as income. Why would that be the case? Because sometimes the state taxes are, are deductible for federal income tax purposes on the Schedule A. So if I go to the Schedule A, you can see in the taxes, we have possibly the capacity to deduct state taxes. Now, the idea then would be, well, what if I pay the state taxes in, let's say, 2023, in our case, if we paid the state taxes in 2023 and got a deduction for it, then what would happen if I overpaid the taxes and then they gave me money back in 2024? Then it would be like, well, now I got a deduction in 2023 for money that they just gave back to me. And that would, of course, incentivize people to do something like, overpay their state taxes in 2023 so that they can get the deduction in 2023 and then the money is just going to come back to them in 2024 in the form of a refund therefore there's got to be a fix to that what's going to be the fix well it could be that you 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 only deduct what's in 2023 that that is actually going to be incurred in 2023 but that would be an accrual principle and it's easier to do taxes on a cash-based system. So the general concept is if I paid the taxes in 2023, then I get the deduction in 2023. You could amend the tax return for 2023 once you get the refund, but that would be a big pain. So the easy solution is saying, if you got a benefit in 2023, then you're going to have to record it in income of 2024, which kind of makes sense. That would be the easy thing to do. I'm not going to go back and fix last year. I'm going to say I got a deduction last year. Then I got a refund of part of the money that I got a deduction for. Therefore, I'm going to include it in income in the current year. That's the principle. Now, it seems fairly straightforward, but there's a lot of kind of caveats to it if I have to basically include it in income. It's also a bit complex as well because not all states have a state income tax. Some people might have a sales tax, some states, and some states might have a sales tax and an income tax, and you might try to pick one for federal income tax purposes and which one to deduct, which we'll talk more about uh, later. So if you have a sales tax, it's less likely that you're going to get a refund from the sales tax, but it's possible that you get some kind of refund of the sales tax that you overpaid in which case you might be in a similar <laughs> in a similar scenario. So the bottom line is this. Uh, if you get a refund, you're going to get a 1099 for it, but the 1099 might not be included in income, and it wouldn't be included in income if you didn't get a tax benefit last year, and you would get a tax benefit on the Schedule A. So if you're talking about a lower income individual, one typically that doesn't own a home, because owning a home is usually what pushes people over to itemizing because of the interest or mortgage, the interest on the mortgage payments and the 
and uh, the state taxes with regards to property taxes. Even if they own a home, they might not be itemizing. So the question is, if you're taking on a new client, for example, which is usually the most difficult thing, then you would say, okay, last year, did they itemize? If they did itemize, I would suggest that they have a more complex return and you might want to take their prior year return and actually do the data input into the software for the prior year so that you can properly do the rollovers in the software from one year to the other because there might be some rollover impacts that the software can help you drill down on such as this um, tax or do you have to include state taxes uh, in income. If they didn't itemize last year, you're probably dealing with a more simple return and possibly you don't need to do that. You could just start doing the data input in 2023 because 2022, probably you can figure out exactly what happened. There's not a complex kind of rollover uh, type of situation. That would be the general concept. Because note, if, if you did, if they did take the deduction last year, you might say, well, that's easy. I can just include it in income. If they itemized last year, then I will include it in income. However, that might not always be the case. Why, why wouldn't that be the case? Well, they might not have gotten a full tax benefit. Let's say they had a, a $5,000 refund from the state that they received in 2023. They itemized last year, which means they had the taxes that they were gonna pay as a deduction, but they were really close to being able to take the standard deduction, right? Let's say they, the, the, you know, they, were, they were close to the threshold of the 13,850 to take the standard deduction. And then they just barely, let's say their itemized deductions were 14,000. Well, then they didn't get the full, you know, 6,000 of, of benefit when they paid it. They only got the difference. They only got the difference between what they would have got on the standard deduction and the itemized deduction. You see, so now, so now you don't want to include the full amount in income. You only want to include the amount, if, if possible, that you have to, which might be the amount that they actually got a tax benefit for. Uh, the other common thing that happens is they might be taking an itemized deduction, but they live in like California and there might be a cap then on the state taxes, which you can easily go over if you live in California or in like New York, because we live, there's a high cost of living and the state taxes have frankly been taking advantage of the federal tax system which allows you to deduct state taxes on uh, on the federal return, which is basically subsidizing high tax places, basically, right? So they put a cap on that. So what if I have taxes that hit the cap? Then I can't I can no, I can't further deduct the taxes, and I might not be getting a benefit past the cap that that I hit on the taxes that were paid. So again, I only want to include the amount in income that I got a tax benefit from last period. Uh, so you can see how those kind of things will impact the calculation. You want to know them in theory and then use the software to help you to, to calculate those uh, issues and then deconstruct uh, the tax return for an explanation to make sure the software is doing it correctly and so that you can explain the rationale to a client or to yourself or to an auditor or whatever. Now, one more kind of weird thing that that could happen, right, is that they could have state taxes as well as uh, as sales tax. You might be in a state that has state tax and sales tax. And for whatever reason, they might have taken the deduction or elected to deduct their sales tax because it was higher than the income tax for whatever reason. And then you got a refund of the income tax. Well, now they itemized and they took the, the taxes deduction but the but it wasn't the income tax that you got a benefit from it was the sales tax and so so it's another kind of weird scenario that could come up okay so given that this is the rookie mistake that most people will do they'll get the 1099 and they'll go okay here it is additional income for taxes i'm going to jump to that in my data input and i'm going to say okay it's a 1099 g and then i'm going to say this came from the california let's just say duh, and then we're going to go okay and then it's going to be a state and local income tax refund. And let's just say it was uh, $5,000. So then we're going to say, all right, then let's go back on over to the forms. And you're going to go, what? It didn't show up here. I did the data input and it didn't, it didn't show up in the return. Why? Because, because uh, the software doesn't know whether or not the, the taxpayer got a deduction for it last year 
because uh, we didn't roll over the tax return. So if you're not using the same tax software to roll it over from last year to this year, the software is going to by default possibly not include it in this line item, even if you do the data input, because it's going to assume that there was no tax benefit from it last year. So if there was a tax benefit from it last year, you got to say, okay, do I want to enter last year's tax return in the software in 2022, even though it might cost me some money because it's a more complex situation and then the rollover will happen and that might help me to calculate this, this software or to basically I just want to force it to happen in the current year, right? So for example, this software has the capacity to, to basically do the data input like a worksheet. So itemized in 2022, income, income tax deduction or sales tax deduction. And you could basically go through this worksheet and, and that'll help you to calculate the tax to see whether or not the refund should be taxable in the current period, or you can force it with an override. Now note that, that most softwares have this kind of override thing for a lot of things, and you don't want to use it most of the time because that means you're, you're overriding something, you're defaulting something. So you would probably want to, in practice, use the worksheet in most cases, unless you're sure that it all should be included in income, or you should, again, do the data input better, more better yet, do the data input of the prior tax return and the prior software, roll it over, and then this calculation will be, will be basically done for you. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna override it uh, uh, with tax return, let's, let's say a number one, duh, duh, and then we're gonna go, Actually, I'm going to put the dollar amount here in the override, 5000 All right, and then I'm going to go back on over, and then basically I forced it to happen now. So now it's pulling over, and I can see it, and I go, okay, there it is. And then I'm going to pull it down and say, okay, do, 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 5000 5000 is then going to pull over to uh, the page one of the form 1040. So now I've got the 100000 and the 5000 is being pulled in from the additional Schedule 1 uh, form. So the, the bottom line is you, you can force that to work, but don't think that you have to include it just because you got the 1099. It's dependent upon what happened in the prior year. Let's do a quick adjustment to our worksheet over here because now we have the schedule one. So I'm going to make a whole nother schedule now. So I'm going to right click on this and uh, and say, let's, let's uh, actually just make a new tab over here. Let's just make a new tab. And then I'm going to put it next to the income because I'm, and I'm going to call it, schedule one schedule one let's say income and so i'll make another tab i'm going to select the whole thing right click format the cells i'm going to make it currency negative numbers bracketed and red no dollar sign get rid of the pennies and i'll make it large and i'm going to go do -do. this is going to be schedule s c schedule one income I should probably name it more formally uh, additional income. Well, I'll just say income. And then I'm going to say this, let's make the whole thing bold. And then I'm going to say this category is called, see if they won't let me copy that, uh, taxable refunds. Let's just call it taxable refunds, taxable refunds. And so I might make this headers. So I'll make this black and white, do home tab, font group. We'll make it black and white, and then I'll make this black and white, black or bordered black, white. And then I'm going to say we have a refund. Now we probably only need a couple lines for that. So I'll make this bordered and blue. And I'm going to say the refund, the amount uh, was 5,000. And then I might have another line over here to see how much of it was taxable or not so that I can, I can do the data input and then I can see how much is taxable, which I'll be reliant in part on the software uh, to help me calculate. So I can see both sides if I'm kind of double checking my data input. And then I could say the total, uh, total, total taxable uh, refund will be on the outside equals the sum. And in this case, all of it has been included I'm going to go back to my first, and then this will be the total schedule one income, which will be equal to this 5,000. I'm going to include that in line one of my formula. So here's my formula, double clicking on it. This is coming from this tab. 
Now I'm going to add a whole nother tab, which is going to have my schedule one income. And so there's that the 105. And then that comes down to 13850. And then that taxable income is 91150. So I'm going to go okay, 91150. Let's go back on over here and say do we're at uh, 91150 page two calculating the tax is now at the 15366. So I'm going to say okay, 15366. And so there's our there's our calculation. Now if the tax wasn't included, and I'm going to say okay, what if I'll still I still got the 1099, but it's not included in income then I can kind of see it in my data input form this way and say, okay, I input it over here into my, into here, but then the software is saying it's not included in taxes, which I'm going to trust the software to do if I properly rolled over the tax return. So I can kind of double check it and say, well, why is that? Well, they didn't itemize last year. Therefore they got this refund, but it's not included and therefore should not be pulling over into my income line item because they didn't get a benefit from it last year. So that's the general idea. It's, 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 so if it's a basic tax return, the, the basic idea is that you're going to get a 1099. Most people panic about it and try, if you're kind of a rookie tax preparer, to put it in to the schedule and then it doesn't show up because the software is assuming they didn't get a benefit from it last time. And because this is a more complex return, if they did get a benefit from it and you have a Schedule A, I, again, would recommend actually inputting the software, the tax return into the prior year software and rolling it over, helping you to do the calculation. Or if you don't want to do that, possibly because it'll cost you money to do that, then you could, you could use the worksheet to help you do the calculation. Because if they did get a tax benefit from it last year, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of the income is subject to income taxes because some of the, the oddities that we, that we mentioned.